we will be able to have a very candid, honest, and open discussion about what's happening in the black community today. Everyone agree to those terms? Absolutely. Okay, Terrence, I want to start with you because I know that you are associated with Newark, which has one of the toughest reputations on the East Coast when it comes to the black community. Is it possible for you to put your finger on one problem that outranks any others, or is it a, a myriad of issues? Um, lack of opportunities. I think that that is something that is um, tied into every single issue that's there. Give me an example. I mean, uh, for instance, when you talk about jobs, um, before you get to jobs, let's talk about training. Um, let's talk about welfare. Let's talk about all of those things. And this is not specific to Newark. It's any urban community. But um, when you see that there's a continuum of parents who raised their kids, or who were raised on welfare, who then raised their kids on welfare, who their kids are not raising their kids on welfare, when do we stop and make an assessment? to say we need to do some intervention here. We need to begin to uh, start installing some sort of skills or uh, available opportunities that will sort of teach different or condition differently. Now, when you talk about doing an assessment, are you talking about looking at society and assessing what it's doing to help these people? Or are you looking at those individuals and saying, why do they continue to live in poverty and on welfare? I think I can answer the question for, uh, I, I want to say most of them. Some want to, you give them this much room to get over, they will. Um, there, so there are people who abuse the system. Um, there are people who have no business on welfare. There's on welfare. And I used to be a, a social worker uh, for welfare in Excess County. So I had those kind of clients. Then I had kind of clients who really use welfare as a stepping stone. But what I'm talking about is social service agencies. What I'm talking about is the public school system. What I'm talking about is our, our leaders who were elected coming together and really not just pointing out what the issue is, but we're coming up with aggressive and innovative plans to address it. I think that the most outstanding issue is economics. If you look at Philadelphia, Philadelphia is the, I think, the most poor out of 10 cities, major cities in the country. And the poverty rate here is the highest. Um, I think that if you don't put jobs and economic opportunities into the equation, that it's not a fair assessment. And I say that because I grew up in Philadelphia in the 50s and the 60s. And when the jobs left our neighborhood in the 60s and the 70s, the men left. So why aren't there jobs available there is, in some of these urban and, and communities, suburban communities as well? What's, know, what's the problem? This is a problem that is not unique to the African-American community. This is a problem that I think plagues this entire country. We've seen the systematic erosion of the purchasing power of our money. We have seen our jobs outsourced and sent overseas. And naturally, uh, the first persons to get the pink slips are the lower people on the totem pole, primarily African Americans. And they're going to be the last to get hired. So the harshness of outsourcing and globalization has hurt African Americans, I think, in a disproportionate way. So this goes back to Terrence's point about lack of opportunities. And it seems to me, if I'm hearing it right, that this is a catch-22 because there's a lack of opportunities because of the poverty. And the poverty causes a lack of, of education, and without education, you don't get the opportunity. I mean, we can zero back into Newark for a quick moment. I think that we, and I'm proud to say that under the, um, and, and, and there's people who took credit before him, but if I can talk about my boss for a moment, uh, Mayor Booker, who really came in with a different agenda, and I like to say that he's our, the Newark's first multicultural mayor. He's talking about things that we had, that, that was sort of not a, um, uh, typical in terms of Newark, bringing back businesses. When you talk about the Macy's that used to be downtown, when, when the factories left, when the riots happened, um, we began to rebuild the inner communities, and Mayor James did a great job uh, in terms of that uh, building community, making blacks feel great about the city again, but businesses, attracting businesses back to the urban cities who will hire under the terms that they hire our people. Um, I think it's economics, I think it's a lack of resources, but I also think it's dependency as well on welfare, on the easy way out, on not even recognizing the capacity that you have in yourselves because some African Americans that I know, whether they live in the hood, whether they live in the suburbs, they're some of the smartest people that I know, but they underestimate themselves mm. and doubt is the strongest poison I've ever come across in my life. And like I grew up in some of these neighborhoods and I made it out to be a graduate at the University of Pennsylvania and sometimes I look and I was presented with that question, well, do you think that black people failed the system or did the people or did the system fail black people so it's like 
you know, it's both ways because if I can pull myself up from the bootstraps from Richard Allen Projects, why can't somebody else? Well, what's, what's the difference? Because I've had people on this show for years that exemplify exactly what the you job. exemplify. They want the fast money, they want to stand on the corner, so, they want to sell Okay, drugs, well wait a minute, that's a different story then. The that's a different the story then. That's, now you're talking about personal accountability and personal responsibility mm -hmm. and I'm reminded of you Bill Cosby's to. speech not too long ago in his book that he wrote that said, hey, black America needs to stop blaming everybody else and say, look at me, well, I but need but to do this myself. But I think that that's a 50-50 thing and one of the issues that, you know, Bill Cosby is a great guy, great role model uh, but it is I, easy I sense a butt coming. But, <laughs> but it's, it's easy to point out the issues people are great at doing that right. uh, those guys have made a lot of money let's come up with some programs let's come up with something that's going to bring about uh, corrective action we have to correct the mind frames of people right. if when folks come out all they've seen is abandoned buildings and projects and and struggling that's if when they turn they on the TV that's and actually. that's how African Street. Americans are depicted on television if that's what we see when you want to talk about uh, a, a fatherless uh, kids, let's start putting on television. Let's start highlighting fathers like myself who take care of their kids and have from the beginning. Okay. Let's right. start putting that message out so that we can see something different well, than they see every day. That's what Bill Cosby did with his women sitcom his years ago. Absolutely, that's what Dr. Cosby said. But you know something, Lynn? This is only really the first generation of African Americans to have gone to school in any large numbers, gotten an education, so wealth familiarity is a serious problem. We have not had the time to have the kind of wealth familiarity and to be able to accrue the kind of wealth within families to pass it on, to give kids that stake when they come out of college, to help them along and get them started in life. It's gonna take a little bit more time. 